<clears throat> hey, it's your afternoon girlfriend, Yvonne Daniels. Happy Friday. Man, I tell you what, I hope you have a great day. And uh, I am so uh, just honored and just happy to be going live uh, with some great people we're going to be talking to, uh, talking about another COVID-19 pop-up testing site. So let me just uh, bring my guest on. We have got Ms. Angela Williams, who's the Director of Special Project with Great Lakes Bay Health Center. How you doing, Ms. Angela? How are you? Fabulous. I've got Dan Sosa, uh, who is the Director of the Samaritan's Community Center. Hey, Dan, how you doing? How are you? Good. And Antoine Martin, yay, is able to join us on in here. He is the HIV Prevention Manager at Great Lakes Bay Health Center. So how you doing, Antoine? Hey. Hey. <laughs> so I tell you what, I cannot believe that it's almost September uh, and we started this pandemic back in March. Um, and, you know, it was only supposed to last two, three weeks tops. Uh, like I said, we're going into September uh, and we're still seeing uh, numbers. They're decreasing in some areas, but in a lot of areas, they're not. Uh, and, you know, as we were talking, Angela, a little earlier, you're, you're saying that there's still miscommunication. Uh, so we just want to make sure uh, that people are getting the right information, uh, that they are getting tested. We know that that is very, very critical. Uh, and so that's why you all are making these COVID-19 pop-up testing sites available for people. So we're going to just dive right into it. And let me just tell you, too, uh, if you have any questions out there as you're watching, please just put your questions in the comment section and we will be happy to get to those. Any questions that you have. Um, and uh, also, before we get started, the COVID-19 uh, pop-up testing site is going to be going on this Tuesday. It's going to be at the Holy Family Catholic Church. You can see it right there as it's scrolling by at 1525 South Washington Avenue. Uh, so that's this Tuesday, 2 to 5 o'clock. All right. So, Miss Angela, uh, we want to get into, like you said, I cannot believe that people are still uh, not getting the information they need. But who can actually be tested? Anyone can still be tested for COVID. One of our challenges is recognizing the need of uh, educating our community on COVID, uh, increasing the awareness of the need to get tested. And also as Great Lakes Bay Health Centers, we are cognizant of the fact that some people don't have access to getting downtown to our drive through or our walkthrough area that we've been hosting mm -hmm. testing since March. And so we created the pop-up testing sites as a result of the state of Michigan identifying the prevalence of COVID being higher in the African-American and Hispanic communities. We are so happy today and pleased that we are hosting this pop-up event on Tuesday, September 1st with Latinos United for Saginaw. We have been communicating with Hispanic leaders and gaining an understanding and assistance and support in identifying measures and appropriate um, messaging to get the word out as to how important it is to get uh, Hispanic neighborhoods engaged in understanding the importance of getting COVID tested. All right. So with that being said, too, uh, you know, and I've been hearing some things, but I uh, want to get it from uh, you uh, or Antoine. So why should people get tested? Yeah. So as we know, with COVID-19, um, you don't always show symptoms. And so you could be carrying the virus and spreading it and not know it. And so we want to encourage people to get tested for COVID. That way they know their status and they can make, you know, the appropriate precautions to you know, protect themselves, protect their family and protect their community especially mm -hmm. for those individuals, let's say, who are going back to work or who've been working like um, on the front lines or they're, you know, engage a lot of people, you really want to encourage them to get tested. And, you know, and, and you say that, but also we're hearing about, uh, I have been hearing commercials uh, and they sound like young people, you know, they're like, man, I went to this party and it was lit. And, but, you know, I think I got Rona and I took it back to, you know, my grandma and I think I lit up the whole house. So, you know, it's sad to say, but even people that are out here that are doing things that are not uh, being obedient, wearing their mask, social distancing, you know, um, they too should be probably getting tested so that they're not infecting the entire house as well. Right. Right. Yes. And so the statistics have shown recently that the higher prevalence of COVID now is in young adults age 20 to 29. And I noticed the other day that Michigan is releasing all of these advertisements about Rona. Yeah. It's about wearing a mask, yeah. uh, proper hand washing and social distancing. And I think that's appropriate at this time that yes. the messaging be emphasized because COVID is not gone. It has not gone away at mm -hmm. all. 
And and it's sad to say, but uh, I don't see it going anywhere. I, I would hope that it would go away, you know, sooner than later. But until people begin to do the things that they've been saying that we need to do, you know, all along, uh, we're probably going to see this and people are going to continue to need to get tested. So according to recent news updates, uh, CDC has released new guidelines for testing. So does this affect the testing practices for Great Lakes Bay Health Centers? No, it does not affect our practice. We will continue to follow our current policy for testing until we receive an official statement of clarification from CDC. So to reemphasize, as Antoine said earlier, anyone who feels the need to be tested is able to be tested through our organization. All right. There's Thank no you. discrimination. There is no question asked. Come to the drive through or walk up and you are able to get tested which is going on this Tuesday at the Holy Family Catholic Church, 1525 South Washington. All right, two to five o'clock uh, this Tuesday. I'm gonna be hanging out there as well. So, all right, so some research is saying that men are more affected by COVID-19 than women. Some folks may not wanna hear that, but <laughs> that's what it's saying. Uh, so why is that exactly? So it, it is statistically a fact that more men are dying than women from COVID-19. Uh, but that's because men have a higher instance of heart disease, high blood pressure, liver disease. It's just more common amongst men. Um, some of men's behavior, such as being the primary um, breadwinner in the family, it means that they have to go out more. Men are more likely to attend, to attend sporting events, shake hands, um, that sort of thing. Um, and also attitude. Men um, Studies show that men's attitudes are a little more lax when it comes to some of these health-related issues, which all lead to a higher rate of COVID-19 infection. So, so, so should we say that we should be trying to, to, to get the women to get these men to, <laughs> to <laughs> do <something> better <laughs> and to get tested as well, uh, for it sure. Right? <laughs> right. We need to make whatever effort we can to get people to test. So yeah. if it means the wife is pushing the husband to go or the significant other, whatever works, we are there to serve, okay? Most definitely. I hear that. Okay. <laughs> so um, why exactly is it important for racial and ethnic minorities to be tested for COVID-19? Yeah. So um, we know for racial ethnic minorities, uh, we're being mostly uh, impacted by the COVID-19, mostly because we typically, I want to say typically, but many racial ethnic minorities have underlying conditions like diabetes, heart disease, and lung disease. And if you have mm -hmm. one of these, you tend to get COVID-19 your uh, risk of uh, experiencing some of the more severe mm -hmm. um, symptoms of COVID-19 are that much more likely to occur. And so we do know, like, for example, for Hispanic and Latinos, hospitals, hospital, being hospitalized is mm -hmm. what 4.6 time, times higher for wow. them in comparison to whites. And so, um, and as of right now, we know, like, in the state, um, Hispanic and Latinos are being disproportionately impacted by COVID-19 because they only represent 8% of the entire population in Michigan, but yet they make up 5% of the COVID cases. Wow. So wow. They're, they're concerned. Yeah. Actually, you yeah. reverse those. It's 5% of the population, but 8% of the COVID cases. So it's higher than oh, the population. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the correction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, and I've been hearing people uh, talk about this, uh, especially since we're so far into it, as far as, you know, being tested. So, Clarify this for us. How does the testing actually work? Well, the testing at Great Lakes is a drive through or like we said, you can walk up and get tested. Uh, overall, you stay in your car. The staff mm -hmm. will take some demographic information and your insurance information. They will follow all safety guidelines when they approach your car. And we have a new testing procedure, Yvonne, since the last time we did this. Cool. The procedure is very easy. Um, it uses a nasal swab that collects a sample from your nose. They place a small Q-tip in each nostril, only takes a few seconds, and you can actually perform the test yourself or be watched by one of our testers. The small swab is not is very simple, it's not uncomfortable, and you'll be contacted by one of our staff within a few days with your results. You know, and I think that's so cool that people uh, that, that people are being allowed to do it themselves, uh, being watched by someone, because I think that 
sends the comfort level up a little bit, uh, which you probably will get more people being tested if they know that they can kind of do it themselves and they, they won't be impaled or won't be, you know, harmed or, or it won't hurt or sting or whatever. So. And it's much simpler than the original test that we were using. That one was more invasive where it almost yeah. made you choke because it went farther down a nasal passage. And this mm -hmm. one, I was so surprised because I've been tested quite often and this one is very easy, convenient and simple. So. And, and will that one be available uh, this Tuesday? That one will be available on Tuesday. Yay. Okay. All right. Excellent. All right. So uh, what does someone do if they test positive or are confirmed to have COVID-19? What then? The recommendations from CDC is that you stay home, avoid public places, and you should quarantine for at least 14 days to reduce your exposure to other people avoid any public transportation, monitor your symptoms. Uh, if your symptoms get worse, you need to call your doctor right away, get rest, stay hydrated. And before going to a healthcare appointment, you should call ahead and tell them that you have COVID so that they take the appropriate screening precautions. Again, we're gonna reemphasize that you always have to wear a face covering, a mask, cover your cough, wash your hands, Clean your hands with hand sanitizer if you don't have soap and water available. And in your home, stay away from other people as much as possible. Avoid sharing personal items in your household like eating utensils, making sure that you are disinfecting everything and cleaning your surfaces as much as possible. And we encourage anyone who's tested positive to please communicate with your family or household members, have a plan in place to avoid and reduce the risk of someone else uh, uh, catching COVID from you. All right, I've got to be vigilant about that for sure. So, yes. um, you know, and people are really happy, uh, of course, when you when they get a, a negative uh, result. But what does a negative test result actually mean? So, if you get a negative test result, it means that you don't have the virus currently, but um, don't be too happy because right. it does, you can still be infected in the future. All right? right. And like I said, you can be infected and not show symptoms. So mm -hmm. regardless, that's why we say it's still important to practice those uh, the social distancing, wearing the face mask when you're outside amongst people or if you're indoor with a lot of people. Um, and also making sure that you're washing your hands uh, more frequently than we will say uh, usual. And then, um, Another good thing, too, is to wipe down areas where, you know, people are prone to, you know, put their hands or have contact. Yeah. You, you know, I know um, I visited my mother recently and I've heard other people that, that say that when they go grocery shopping, they actually have. I know my mom does dishwater with Clorox and she gets it all out and she wipes down every single thing <laughs> when she goes shopping and brings it into the house and everything, you know, before she puts it up. So talk about being vigilant. So um, that's good. Yeah, I, I, I think so. It's work, but I, I'm not mad at her. And I kind of started to incorporate that myself. So, <laughs> so, so you know, and, and uh, it's interesting too. Just a quick question that I had. Um, so, how often do you would you encourage someone to be tested? And we're talking about those people that are essential people that are on the front lines. Uh, uh, once every couple of weeks. I mean, is or is there a time? You know, uh, amount that they should be tested. So our policy at Great Lakes um, is more related to, if, especially essential workers, if you feel the need to be tested, if you think you have been exposed to someone with a possible positive test, then you can get tested as often as necessary. But we just ask everyone, you know, use your own as a healthcare personnel and those in the front line, you have to kind of make that decision on your own. We don't have a concrete policy saying everyone should get tested every two weeks. If I were to travel in a hot spot area where I know in a city where there were a lot of crowds that I tried to avoid, but I had no choice, mm -hmm. me as a nurse and as a person, I think that I would be more proactive in getting tested so that I would be more conscientious of, okay, if I am positive, I know I need to take these measures to protect my friends, protect my family, and protect my workplace. Right. All right. Good advice. All right. 
So according to the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, um, there's an alarming rate, and we've been hearing about this, racial and ethnic disparities uh, in COVID-19 cases and deaths, uh, like uh, Dan kind of corrected there. Hispanic Latinos make up 5% of the Michigan population, but account for 8% of COVID-19 uh, cases. So why is it important to bring COVID-19 testing and education awareness to our community? Well, the reason it's important is to address that disparity. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with providing culturally appropriate messaging, we're more likely to get people to want to be tested or be willing to be tested. There's a lot of fear out there in our community, and that education is the best way to combat it. Um, so that's why we're us utilizing different venues such as social media, uh, local churches, local community organizations and centers to get the word out about this testing um, because... Folks are, are really limited in the interactions now that they have with um, groups like schools and, you know, the, our interactions are cut down so much. Yeah. We have to work these organizations to be able to get people out. Um, so this education has to happen through, through kind of a very grassroots means. So the social isolation and quarantine that people are going through is really not conducive to uh, getting people out and getting people wanting to be tested. Right, right, right. All right, so, um, and, and education is just, it's so crucial because uh, that's mm -hmm. the power, so. so as well as the location, you know, there's the location is right next to um, one of the Mexican American, uh, well, actually the Mexican American Cultural Center, which is a pretty yeah. active community partner. So right. people are, in our community are familiar with that facility. They're familiar with um, the location next door to that where the testing mm -hmm. will be. Um, and so hopefully it'll break down some of the barriers that and reservations people have and, and right. encourage them to come on and get tested. Which once again, cannot stress it enough, is this Tuesday, uh, two to five o'clock at the Holy Family Catholic Church, 1525 South Washington. They're gonna be out there from two until five o'clock. Uh, and as Angela Williams has stressed, uh, got a new testing uh, method, which you can do yourself. Someone can watch you. Uh, and so, you know, won't be as maybe as uncomfortable. So uh, those are all just, positives. So what, this is not a positive, but <laughs> what are the risks of COVID-19 infection? Well, we want, you want to go ahead. So we know like for those who are high risk, um, kind of like how we talked about earlier, it's those individuals that one that are typically older have uh, dis underlying diseases like diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, mm -hmm. kidney disease, and so forth. But um, that just means you're at higher risk. Doesn't mean that there's no risk. So anybody can get this virus. I want to stress that anybody can get this virus. And just because you're young doesn't mean that you won't experience symptoms or get some of the severe uh, symptoms. So I just wanted to reiterate that. And um, one of the things that we do say is that, you know, if you do feel sick and uh, you start uh, feeling some of those uh, severe uh, uh, symptoms like a fever, a dry cough, difficulty breathing, tired, aches and pains, runny nose, nasal congestions, all that, make sure you contact your um, primary care provider ASAP. Don't postpone it. Right. And especially when we talked about men, they're like, oh, you know, I don't need to go to the hospital or anything. I'll find, like, I just need to, you know, sleep it off or whatnot. No, take it serious. And go, that's right, go see about it. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, uh, talking about that, how can people find help uh, to stay safe and healthy during this time? So we are fortunate at Great Lakes that we are, we collaborate with many other community agencies. And so 211 is the primary resource in the community right now that is helping to spread the message in reference to statewide resources, including uh, COVID testing, as well as if you have a need for food or diapers, rental assistance, call 211 and they can help you. Uh, some of the other measures that we encourage the community to take as actionable steps includes, you gotta stay informed about COVID. You see it on the news every day, but you have to be proactive and learn on your own. Yeah. Don't stigmatize people by saying, oh, they got the pot, they were positive for COVID or they got the COVID. Our goal is to demystify this. This is a healthcare concern, it's a public health pandemic, we're making as many efforts as we can 
to educate the public, do not put off your medical or dental visits. You have to call before you uh, show up at any of those appointments, no matter which, either you go private or public uh, places, you need to call in advance. We are a primary care provider for more than 56,000 patients at over 30 locations as a part of Great Lakes Bay Health Centers. And we provide medical, dental, and behavioral health services, uh, regardless of what your insurance status is, or if you are not insured, we're taking as many safety protocols as possible to provide either telehealth or face-to-face -face visits if necessary. We are limiting the amount of people in the buildings and facilities just to keep everybody safe. One thing that we didn't mention, Yvonne, is that we are gonna offer HIV testing at this pop-up site. This will be the first time we know that the statistics are gonna show because of social isolation, the STD rates, the rate of pregnancy, as well as HIV has to have drastically increased during this time of isolation. So we are taking measures to provide access for HIV testing. It would only take 20 minutes or less with a swab that can get the swab as they're waiting. So we are trying to do everything we can to make these services as convenient as possible for our community. We care about our community and we believe in quality care for everyone. And, and thank you so much for uh, making this available. And for both of these, HIV testing and COVID-19, people need to know their status. So uh, making that possible, uh, once again, uh, this COVID-19 and HIV pop-up testing site is going on this Tuesday. Uh, it is going to be at the, uh, scrolling by here, Holy Family Catholic Church. Uh, and once again, that address is 1525 South Washington, two to five o'clock uh, this Tuesday. So come on out, uh, know your status, get tested. Uh, I thank you guys so much for uh, my guest for coming in and joining me and, and talking about this because education is just so needed. Um, uh, thank you, Alexandra. Sis, we appreciate all you're doing to help our people out. So, uh, and we appreciate you for watching and, and getting this information. So, uh, once again, to Dan Sosa, the director of Samaritas uh, Community Center, thank you. Uh, Antoine Martin, the HIV prevention manager, thank you. And Angela Williams, director of special projects for Great Lakes Bay Health Centers, thank you. And we will see all of you out there as we uh, get tested uh, this Tuesday, all right, at the Holy Family Catholic Church, 1525 South Washington, two to five o'clock this Tuesday. So uh, if there's nothing else anyone uh, wants to discuss, any, anything else that we missed? We just would like to ask that you spread the word to your yeah. friends, your family, and take advantage of this opportunity. A lot of work goes into this effort, and we know that it, it is essential that we provide this service to the community. Yes. And, and one way you can do that, too, as uh, you speak of sharing is you can share uh, this YouTube. This is on our KISS 107.1 Facebook page and our KISS 107.1 YouTube channel. Uh, you can share it. You can have uh, family and friends come back and watch it as well if, if you miss any of the information. But uh, thank you all so much. We'll see you on Tuesday and uh, everybody have a great day. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right.